to the corner. That one good. Up ahead 
Morgan Kane behind Mack lays it in. Defense by Donarski going the other way and one. Driving up and in. Izzy Zingaro. And for the second time in a row, Iowa State upsets Baylor. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our expanded coverage of the NCAA Women's Basketball Selection Show. I'm John Walters. Glad you could join us today. Here's what we recommend for you. This is a second screen option, so you still want to be watching ESPN and watch all the coverage as the bracket unveils. Just have this off to the side ready, and when you see us talking, turn up the volume, and, and you'll be good to go. And we're getting a little head start since the coverage on ESPN starts here in about 10 minutes. But let's bring in Iowa State head coach Bill Fenley and coach... Uh, after uh, last year, it just has to be really special to know that you've gotten to this point. I saw you on Twitter all day, counting down the hours, the minutes. Uh, you're obviously very excited about this moment. Yeah, John, uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, this never gets old. Uh, I think uh, one of the things you learn quickly is you never take these opportunities for granted. And I think you just look at the, the men's and the women's field. There's a lot of names that people usually see in March aren't there. Uh, I think it just, it's just one of those things. And I think especially this year, what everyone's been through, uh, what this team has been through, uh, what everyone around this program has been through to get to the point where uh, our university can celebrate uh, being on a national stage. Uh, our players get to play in, in, uh, in the tournament they dreamed about playing the, in when, they, when they're growing up. And hopefully, uh, uh, you know, we'll – We'll be excited about what the opportunity is ahead of us, but certainly a great, great, th great moment for all of us and excited and proud of our team and, and all the people that worked so hard to get us to this point. Yeah, you said something really good there. You should never take it for granted because it is hard to make the NCAA tournament and your team's well tested. You played an aggressive schedule, half your games away from Hilton Coliseum. Uh, so your team is very deserving of being in this tournament. No, I, I believe so, John. And, and, you know, who knows where you get seated and all that stuff. I, I've never really cared much about that. I think the the number next to your name just tells you who what jersey you wear. Um, I'm more concerned, especially this year when there's no home sites and everyone's going to San Antonio. It, it's so much more about the matchup. And and you saw it. You know, all they talked about yesterday on the men's side was not who was playing who, but but the matchup and and, and styles of play. And uh, but you know, you don't take it for granted because you just don't know. You assume. You're going to get there. You know, our freshmen think, oh, this we'll do this every year. That's not the case. There's a lot of great players. There's a lot of great programs that haven't played in the NCAA tournament. And so I think the challenge is appreciate how hard you got work to get work to get here. Uh, enjoy the moment. Enjoy everything about it. But don't think that this is something that happens all the time because it just doesn't. And uh, that's why I think for this group and, and what they've been through, uh, maybe it's a little more special than most years. Coach, I hate to put too much on one game, but you did win at Baylor, and I think that has to tell your team that they can beat anybody in this tournament. No, I, I agree, John. I, I think one of the things we talked about, that's the the uniqueness today. You, you, you know, we practiced today, and it wasn't the best practice probably we've ever had, but but you don't know who you're going to play. So, But we faced um, Baylor and Texas and uh, Ayoki Lee at Kansas State and – and Natasha Mack at Oklahoma State, and you know we've seen, you know South Carolina, Aaliyah Boston, and I don't know who else is out there that we haven't seen. Um, you know we've tested our team, we've played a lot of road games, uh, we've played some very very good teams. I think our strength of schedule is eight, nine, ten, somewhere in there. So I don't think uh, by any means we'll be overwhelmed by who we play in the first game. Um, again, it goes back to the matchup, but we've seen about everything we can see. And hopefully that's a good thing. I think we all are looking for someone different to play. We're tired of playing the same people. They don't know you as well. Uh, so hopefully we'll find that. And whoever we play, we'll be excited about it and look forward to the opportunity. Now the entire tournament is going to be held in San Antonio. How does that change your approach? You know, John, it changes a lot. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the rules and the quarantine and all that stuff is going to be extremely strict. But obviously, you know, normally you're, you're thinking about going to someone's home court. Can you win one and then you got to beat someone on their home court? Well, now you have every single team going to San Antonio. Uh, everyone's like, oh, that's going to be cool. Well, 
you're gonna you're gonna see San Antonio out your room of your hotel. Uh, there's not gonna be no. The only thing about the Riverwalk, I think there's a Riverwalk region. There won't be any people on the Riverwalk uh, that are playing or coaching. But um, but I do think it's different uh, for everyone. I, and it's probably John, to be honest, a little more different for those top 16 seeds that kind of assumed we play two home games, ease into this tournament, and then go play. Uh, that's not going to be the case this year. All right, Coach, we'll let you go watch the show, and we'll talk to you again once Thank you're you, selected, John. okay? Appreciate Looking forward you, to that. Go all right, Cycle. Thank you all. I'm going to catch up with Ashley Jones in just a moment. Uh, Iowa State, by most projections, expected to be probably uh, right in the seven – range maybe seven eight nine somewhere in that range by most projections uh it looks at three different bracketologies today and that's where they had iowa state listed we'll see if that's uh come, becomes reality certainly the resume is good they have some great great wins they went 12 and 6 in a, in a terrific big 12 conference so uh iowa state has done the legwork to put themselves in the position uh to play in this tournament without a doubt and leading the charge has been ashley jones the uh outstanding junior from Iowa City and Ash, uh, this has to be really exciting for you. I mean, you experienced the tournament as a freshman. You were all set to do the same thing again last year and then kind of had it ripped away from you. So how appreciative are you to, to just get to today and, and get to watch your name pop up on that screen? Yeah, it's always exciting when you get to get the opportunity to play in the tournament, but especially this year when you don't know what exactly is going to happen. And just anytime you get the opportunity to play, it's uh I, it's big. So we just have to make the most of it and go out there and uh, give everything we have. Well, you're going to a warm city, San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how much you'll be outdoors, but it would be nice to stay there a while uh, in the warmth. That little extended spring break in a year when then there is no spring break at Iowa State. Yeah, for sure. Tell me about uh, what you've seen uh, in your own game from the start of the season to now. Where, where do you think you've grown in your game this season? Uh, definitely just getting better at reading the defenses. Uh, they're sending multiple players at me, double teams. And so just kind of reading what they're doing and uh, making plays off of that as well. I think one thing that's a real testament to your work ethic is when you were a freshman, you shot about 70% from the free throw line. Sophomore year, you're just over 80. And this year, you're just under 90. So obviously, you've put a lot of work in. We all know you like getting in the gym. But um, it's nice to see it pay off, isn't it? Uh, yeah, just to see that all the, your hard work and everything you've done up to this point, that it's making an impact. Like everything from when I was younger to now, uh, all that time in the gym with my dad and my sisters just really uh, paid off. And it is a great family with an unbelievable basketball history and an unbelievable basketball future. Uh, I'm sure that they're, uh, they're enjoying this with you. And obviously it's special for you because you get to enjoy it with your sister this year. Yeah, for sure. And they're all watching. So uh, it's it's <laughs> like we say, it's a family uh, atmosphere here. So everyone's uh, families are watching. And so they're all really excited for us. Well, you can go ahead and wave to your family. It's OK. And uh, <laughs> Speaking of Aubrey and the freshmen, how have you seen them grow over the course of this season? Uh, just in their confidence. Uh, they've got become more confident with uh, where they're at, where they're playing and uh, just kind of being confident in uh, what they're doing. Uh, they're more aggressive on the defensive end, the offensive end, and they're just out there playing, and that's what they're here to do. Awesome. Well, we'll let you go watch. I know you're nervous and excited, and so go on in there and watch, and uh, congratulations. You Thank you. It. All Thank right. Thanks, Ash. And so there again, you see the team. They are in the Pete Taylor Media Room here in Hilton Coliseum. ESPN's coverage begins right now. We'll keep that shot for you so you can see their reaction when Iowa State's name is called. And We'll maybe join you during the commercial breaks in between uh, brackets if it takes a little while for Iowa State's name to be called. The good news is it's going to be called. And when it is, we will have Bill Fenley and maybe a player to visit with as well to get a little reaction to who Iowa State's playing and uh, when they're playing. So we're excited about it. Watch the team. Watch the show. And uh, turn us back up when, uh, when you see us on the screen. In the meantime, enjoy the coverage on ESPN. I'm <laughs> 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 
there you have it it didn't it wasn't a long wait that's what we like uh not a lot of suspense it, it happened quickly iowa state a seven seed and they will take on michigan state out of the big ten conference and uh this is you know a rematch of one of the most memorable ncaa tournament matchups in iowa state history in 2009 when allison lacy and heather azell and that great cyclone team rallied uh, scoring the final eight points to advance to the Elite Eight uh, against Susie Merchant's team, and she's still the coach at Michigan State. And so uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. But uh, Michigan State, 15-8 and eight overall, 8-7 and seven, 
uh, in the Big Ten. They finished eighth place in the Big Ten, lost to Iowa in the semifinals, battled some injuries late in the season. So that's going to be something to really keep an eye on. Uh, they have Nia Cloudon, their leading scorer, terrific player, averaging almost 19 points a game. Um, they have a, a team average about 75 points a game, give up about 68 uh, and hit about six and a half threes a game. So they don't totally depend on the three, but they certainly can shoot the threes. It'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. So we didn't have to wait long. We're going to go right back to visiting with Bill Fenley again. And uh, this is this is something, Coach. You get Michigan State again. Uh, you didn't have to wait long. All your countdown all day. <laughs> you didn't yeah. have to. You didn't have to sweat it out. That was good. No, no, that was really good, and uh, just so proud uh, of our team and and everyone, John. You you know what we've all been through, and um, you know I, one of the things that I, I miss probably the most uh, is our families can't be here. Uh, they're sitting in the bleachers at Hilton, and they've been separated from us all year. And the sacrifices our families have made is has been as great or greater. Uh, than the players and the staff. I mean, they're so connected to what we do and how we do things here. Uh, so that's that's a bittersweet moment. But uh, we're going to celebrate this as right off the bat. Um, Coach Steyer was talking about playing the history of playing Michigan State back in the day. And Susie Merchant's a dear friend of mine. Uh, she's a great coach. I, I, I'm so old and she's so young. I coached against her when she played at Central Michigan. So oh, wow. uh, it's exciting to, to play a great team, a great Big Ten team, and we're looking forward to that opportunity. And, and we have to wait till Monday, but it yeah. gives us a little time to rest up. We definitely have some kids that need some rest. But the chance to play in this event and to see Iowa State's name come up on a national stage is as good as it gets. You do have a great familiarity with their program and with Susie Merchant and the way she runs her program and how she does things. So um, what style of play do you think they'll bring to the table on Monday night at 5 o'clock? You know, they're going to be very athletic. Um, they're, going to, they're going to be very well coached. They played really well at the end of the year. Um, I, I think their team, you know, Nia Cloud can really play. Uh, they're going to be athletic. They're going to change defenses. Uh, but they're not going to beat themselves. And I think they had some they had some injuries early. It, it's a lot better than a 10 seed when you went into this season. Uh, you know, they've done a lot of good things. They've had some good wins. Uh, it's going to be a tremendous test for us. And, and like I said, John, in the beginning, the 7-10 thing just means we wear white jerseys and they wear green. It doesn't mean one team's better than the other. But uh, it's going to be an, an exciting time. And like you said in the pregame, the pre-show thing is it's just the uniqueness of everyone going to one site. We'll see what happens. But now the challenge is, is a staff, as a team, uh, like I tell our team every year, it's one thing to be selected. Now you got to play in yeah. the NCAA tournament. If, if the, if the most exciting thing that happened to us tonight is tonight, then, you know, then what's the point? Let's go down there. Let's compete. Let's play the right way. Let's get on, a national stage, represent our school and our fan base and see what happens. Texas A&M on the other side of that four team quad and certainly one of the best teams in the country coach. Yeah, they are. I mean, Gary's done an amazing job there and a lot of people had them as a number one seed. I think they would have been if they had not gotten beaten the, uh, by Georgia in the conference tournament. Uh, they won the SEC regular season, which means they beat South Carolina and uh, arguably a team that, that mo a lot of people will think is underseeded as a two. So, uh, you know, it's like someone said to me, you know, what do you think about playing Texas A&M? I'm like, I hope we get the chance to play because that means we won the first one. Yeah. Um, first I, at, this, <laughs> at this point, it doesn't really matter. But it's a it's a great team and uh, a great program. And, uh, you know, you're we're just excited that, that that our kids got to get get this moment. And now you need to, to get plans and get all the travel ready to go. But it, it's fun to work late tonight yeah. the, the alternative isn't very good <laughs> for sure a couple more for you coach and then i'm gonna let you go yeah. but you have five freshmen on your roster but you do also have you know the three seniors you've got ash and then you know maddie and, and morgan were redshirting that year the, you last played in the ncaa tournament so you do have some tournament experience how do you kind of rely on that and what what does it take to be successful in the ncaa tournament uh, i i think the the you know, John, that's a great point. We do have enough people that have been there, done that. The Big 12 gets you ready. The schedule that we already talked about. I think in the NCAA tournament, the biggest thing is how do you accentuate what you do well? Uh, players have to understand that. 
don't get outside yourself. We're, we're going to play a certain way, uh, but you want to play your game uh, mm-hmm. and, and understand that you, you don't, don't reinvent what you are. There's a reason you were picked to get in this tournament. So don't try and be something that you're not, you know, it goes back to what I always tell everyone. Let's embrace who we are, not apologize for what we're not. Let's play the game the right way. And then the last thing I think is the last two things are be really good in special situations, late shot clock stuff, and then you got to get a little bit lucky. Yeah. Uh, we've all been there. We've all seen those stories of teams that won national championships. And, you know, you think about, oh, they won a one point game or, you know, they hit a half court shot or whatever. But, you know, balance being in the tournament with enjoying playing in the tournament and be focused on the season is going to end, but just tell yourself not tonight and yeah. just let it rip for 40 minutes. Well, I know somebody who's probably, I, I'd almost guarantee you is watching right now is Dr. Winterstein. She's been at every one of your games that I've been to. I've seen her sitting right there front and center. Uh, it's got to feel great to know that uh, you've got this whole university behind you, coach. There's a lot of people really excited right now for you and your players. And after all they've gone through this year, it's from the top right on down. There's a lot of people excited for you. Yeah, John, and, and it's, I'm I'm glad you mentioned that because I got a very nice email from Dr. Winterstein and Robert right after. I mean, they were at the Texas game. Uh, the next day, I go to my office Sunday morning. There's an email from Dr. Winterstein. I think the president of Iowa State has a lot going on right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but for her to take the time, and, 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 and she wants to be a fan. She she. She loves Iowa State. She sits with the fans. She's she's one of us. She has been forever. And I think that's the leadership that we get here on a daily basis, and that goes to Jamie. And, and every, there's no way we're in this position without the leadership of our university that allowed our student athletes to have a chance to get yeah. to this point. And it started in, in, the, in the summer, went through all fall, and now we're the beneficiaries of it now. And it's our job to represent the right way and represent our university the way we should. Well, your 19th NCAA tournament would have been 20 uh, a year ago, but you know what? Uh, 19, as you said, it never gets old. It's still like Christmas morning for you, and I love that. Yeah, it so, is. It, it, the only thing better is watching my grandkids open Christmas presents. Other than that, <laughs> there's nothing better than this. Uh, there isn't. And congratulations. You deserve Thank you all. Appreciate, appreciate you doing this tonight. Go Cyclones. Yes, Thank you bet. all. You bet. Thank you. And good luck. So Bill Fenley and the Cyclones headed to the NCAA tournament, 19th time in Bill's 26th years. Uh, there you see the bracket, Iowa State, the seven seed facing number 10, Michigan State. That'll be Monday night, 5 p.m. Central time on ESPN. And then Texas A&M, Troy winner awaits the winner of that game. And uh, you can continue to watch ESPN for the rest of their coverage. But uh, Iowa State, Michigan State, this is exciting because, as I mentioned, that 2008-2009 game was an all-time classic, one of the most memorable games in Iowa State women's basketball history. Uh, I can still see Allison Lacey's line drive three going through and Iowa State scoring the final eight points uh, to beat Michigan State and advance to the lead eight. And we're visiting now with Kristen Scott. Kristen, you got to be so excited. You, you didn't have to wait that long <laughs> to hear your name called. And after all this long, long wait, uh, basically two years, it has to feel great to see your name up there. Yeah, it does. Um, we were really excited. Me and Maddie were talking on the sides, talking about how nervous, why are we nervous? We're like, why are we nervous? But yeah, it was really exciting to see our name up there, especially at a uh, seven seed. And you play a name program, a, a program that a lot of people are very familiar with in Michigan State. How excited are you to, to play a great program like that? Um, I heard we played them back when we made it to the Elite Eight. So uh, yeah. that's kind of exciting. So, yeah, like you said, it's a name in the program. So we're excited, ready to get to work. What do you say to the younger players? Because there are five freshmen on this roster um, that haven't experienced this. Um, how do you kind of give them a little idea of what's exciting and, and thrilling about being in the NCAA tournament without getting them <laughs> nervous about it? They have to go play and do what they've done all season, and they've been great. But right. how do you, what, what do you share with them? Basically, just this is supposed to be fun. This is like the what we anticipate all year long. And um, especially with this year going through COVID and all that, I think just the fact that we made it to the NCAA tourney, just just appreciate it, have fun, and just stay excited. I know they are. I know we all are. So, Well, and for you seniors, uh, what a great, great way to go out. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine a better thing than you three who are all so close uh, being on the same team and, and taking Iowa State back to the NCAA tournament. It's got to be the perfect uh, way to, to wrap up your Iowa State career. Yeah, for sure is. And, you know, missing out on it last year, I think that just makes this year that much more special. So, yeah, we're really excited. 
Last thing for you, Kristen, I mentioned this to Coach Fenley. You beat Baylor on their home floor. If you can do that, you can beat anybody in this tournament. How much confidence does that give you knowing that, hey, we've proven we can beat anybody? And you went 12-6 and six in a great Big right. 12. I think we have to remember that that we can't play with anybody. and But we just got to remember to take each game, just one game at a time, and take the next one when it comes. So. All right. Well, it's all down in San Antonio starting Monday. Congratulations. You Thank you. It. Thank you. All right. Kristen Scott, our guest, and Iowa State is on to the NCAA tournament once again. And uh, we appreciate you watching our expanded coverage of Iowa State advancing to the NCAA tournament.